Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a lavender field at sunset. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about this image. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been in chat for, for today's show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those in chat, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, I am going to be using a long canvas today. This uh, image was cropped in kind of a widescreen format, so I decided to go ahead and go with the longer canvas. You can crop it however you want to. It's going to be a really, really easy project to do since we've just got, you know, one focal point with the trees. You can put that pretty much anywhere on any kind of size canvas, and just depending on how much lavender fields that you want, you could even make it on a longer canvas and have more of the fields showing. There's all kinds of different ways to adapt it. I've got an 18 by 8 by 16 inch canvas here today, and I've coated it with um, cadmium orange, and I put it on um, kind of a thick coat. You can see the darker color up here at the, t at the corners, and I felt like it was a little too dark, so I just took a paper towel and wiped it down, uh, wiped off the excess. So. Um, just a little dab of paint will probably do and just cover up the canvas with just a very light coat. You could use a yellow, just kind of kind of any kind of warm undertone color um, will work for this. And um, as far as brushes go, you're going to want some sort of a large flat because we're going to be doing this, especially on this longer canvas, you're going to want to be able to do these nice long wide sweep, sweeping stroke brush strokes. Um, so uh, I'm going to grab my three inch Aspen and um, I've got some smaller flats, brights, and for the um, fields and things, you're going to want either like a fan brush. So I got a couple different sizes of fan brushes. I got some Deerfoot stiplers for my trees, and then I got a couple of my blender brushes. Um, these are Princeton brushes, so the red handles are the Velvet Touch blenders, and then these are um, the Select and the blue handles, Princeton Select in the uh, fan and deerfoot stiplers in a couple different sizes. So I'll mention them as I use them, but um, we'll get going here on the colors. I've got burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone burnt orange, Indian yellow hue, cadmium yellow light, uh, medium and light, and then cadmium orange. Those are fluid acrylics and they kind of ran into each other. Um, cadmium red light, Quinacridone magenta, doxazine purple. That's going to be our main color for our uh, lavender, obviously. Um, and then I've got a color called brilliant purple, which is basically kind of doxazine purple plus white. So it's kind of already pre-mixed. Um, and then uh, what one is that? Ultramarine blue, <laughs> Thalo blue green shade, uh, unbleached titanium, and a bunch of titanium white. And then this is my gloss glazing liquid. Um, and I'm also going to grab a fluorescent purple. I found I had this color, so I'm going to grab that one and use that um, later on just for some of the highlights. All right, let's go. Your, your yellows and orange have made a snowman. Yes, they have. <laughs> Got an Even orange snowman there. With the, yeah. with the light reflections, it looks like the buttons and the nose and stuff. So. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it sure does. It's great. I know you wanted to know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start up here with the blue with the large brush. I think, well, I don't know. There's a couple of ways of I can do this. Um, I think. Um, okay, so I'm going to put my, let me go ahead and mark out my horizon line just to give me kind of an idea of how far down I want to put my, my sun. And I think I'm going to leave a little bit below half. So not quite on the third, but somewhere in here. Kind of like, no, I think I want to go a little lower than that because you can see how the fields dip down or the lavender fields kind of do like this. And I want to be sure that my sun is down in here um, and not up here. So that's kind of where my lavender is going to go. But the field is actually going to be down here or the sun the sun is going to end right down there that's the horizon line so somewhere in there just having a ruler is going to help me kind of get a more straight line it doesn't have to be exactly straight this is not water so we don't have to really worry about it being exactly straight but 
it'll kind of help me as I paint to get a little closer to where I want to be. All right, so I guess I'll go ahead and start with this, and I really kind of wish my yellows didn't do this, but I'm, I'm going to grab some of my cadmium yellow light and a little bit of white. And I'm probably just going to need to grab regular paint. I don't know why I put out the fluid acrylics. And I'm just going to kind of run it across here. Just some streaks there. And then I'm going to get the cadmium yellow medium and do the same. And just kind of streak it in. Not really worried exactly about where, you know, it's going at this point. I'm just going to get paint down on the canvas pretty quickly. Getting a little bit more of that lighter color, streaking that back through. So I want this area to kind of have these ins and outs like that of the sky. And then it's going to fade off into kind of pink. So I'm going to just wipe this off and pick up some magenta and brush that into what I've already got on my brush. I might grab a little bit of the orange too. So just a little bit of orange and magenta. That's nice, okay. And then I'm gonna use that and go back up through here and just kind of make a transition between my blue and my yellow with this kind of mauve. It'll keep my blue from turning um, green. So I'm using this as sort of a transition color between the yellow areas and my blue areas of my sky. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to throw in some streaks there. And I go a little bit brighter with it so I get a little bit more of the magenta. And you, I haven't added any white or any water at this point. I want to keep my paints fairly thick and having them kind of the same consistency. If I added water, it could actually lift off some of the other colors. So I'm not really wanting to add a lot of water as I'm doing this. Just wanting to kind of keep these paints fairly thick. But it is, you know, if they, if you do feel like they're getting like super sticky, you can just stop and and then come back and add a little bit more of. You know whatever your first color was to kind of continue the blending so say my yellow was dry or getting sticky and I didn't want to touch it um, and just let it the whole thing dry then I could come back here once this was dry and then add a little bit more of that yellow color um, in the areas just where I want that transition to happen um, so just right along in that. I don't really don't want it up that high. I'm not sure why I did that. Just kind of showing you what I meant, but I don't want it up there. I want that to start to be blue. Okay, so that's starting to get a little bit sticky. I'm going to get just the tiniest little bit of water. I don't want it a lot of water, though, like I said, because I will just start lifting off paint, and that won't be what we want. Okay, so pink here coming down and adding some streaks into and I'm doing these all horizontally so that all my streaks are kind of going side to side that looks good and then at this point I really want to clean out this brush totally which I can't really do in this water this is why I was kind of having a conundrum is like what what do I want to do first because um, I think though I can use this hopefully. Let me see if I have another one of this size. I do not. Okay. I have to have Mark kick it and rinse it off for me. Just rinse that off real quick for me in the sink if you don't mind. Thank you. That'll give this a chance to dry a little bit too. It'll this next step will be a little bit better if it doesn't blend too much with what we've got already down. I'm going to put out some more of my cadmium yellow light, but I'm going to put it in the heavy body instead of the fluid acrylic. Thank you, my love. Okay, 
Here we go. All right, so take most of the moisture out of it and get a little bit in there just so I can control how much is in. Whenever I'm washing out my brush, I always want to just kind of start by taking all the moisture out of it so it's starting kind of as dry as I can and then add a little bit of water to it so that I can control and know how much moisture is in my brush because I don't want it dripping and causing a mess on my canvas. I'm going to get the Thalo blue green shade and the ultramarine blue and do those 50 50 yet that's kind of the my favorite sort of sky blue color combo it's just uh the blue and the the more green in the thalo blue green shade and the more purpley tones in the ultramarine blue combined to make a really nice just straight royal blue might go just slightly more on the blue the ultramarine blue side so it's just like slightly more purplish tint tinted and then I'm going to deliberately kind of go into this mauve on one side of it. So I'm going to keep the dark blue on this side and I'm going to just dip into that mauve on that side so that I'm going to go now up here to my canvas and okay so that see how because we have that orange underneath there it's turning that um, kind of a dark color to avoid that um, I'm going to add a little bit of white. That will make it more opaque and it'll cover over the green. So now it's blue. Um, so if you ever have that trouble and your undertones are kind of, you know, mingling in a way that you don't want them to, then you can just add a little white and it'll handle it for you. And then after this dries, I can go back in and add more of that bright blue and it'll have a barrier. That white will kind of create a barrier between the green. That, that was a consideration when I put this green down. Um, or the the orange down as my kind of undertone. It was like, uh, you know, I knew it was gonna mix with this blue, but this is pretty much the only place that I've got this blue, so I, d I felt like it was still worth it to, uh, even if it did that. So get a little bit more of that brighter blue. Just go up there in that corner and do that. And I'm not worried about it, like, not mixing very well down here yet. I'm just going to let that um, do its thing. I'm going to wipe this out and I'm going to get some more white. Mix that in totally and a little bit more of that magenta and it'll make kind of a purple color here. So I wiped out most of the color that was in the brush. So most of the blue is out. Got some white and then added some magenta to create kind of a purpley tone and I'm going to use that to kind of go blend over this edge and this blue is still a little bit wet right here so it should blend for me instead of lifting if it if at any time you see the blue color coming up and it's not blending but it's just kind of coming off the canvas then just stop don't do anything because it'll like right there it'll lift and it'll cause um it won't it won't lay down any more paint. It'll just kind of cause problems. So, all right. Getting some magenta, a little bit more. And this brush is almost too big at this point. I kind of need a little bit smaller brush and I think I'm gonna switch to one. But I'm gonna kind of tap in just a little bit at the start to some of these clouds that are in here. get my smaller flat now this is the um, 12 bright and I'm going to get a little bit of the a little bit of this color and a little bit of this color so a little bit of the orangey and a little bit of that magenta and I'm gonna kind of just blend through here I'm gonna get some white so that it's a little bit lighter a little bit prettier There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we've got kind of a nice smoky kind of mauve color here. Let's get a little bit more of the magenta and cadmium red. 
or a cadmium orange, I mean, it'll make kind of a reddish tint. And I want the value to be close to this yellow, so I'm just gonna keep adding more white until it gets close to the yellow, so it's not so obvious. I might get a little bit of the yellow and add it to that too, so it's a little warmer. There we go. I'm gonna wipe that out, get more of the just yellow and come back. And this is what I was saying with, like if that yellow dried and you want to mix in, you just kind of mix back in both colors. You mix in a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of whatever the new color you're trying to introduce. And then just make sure that when you're blending it, you have kind of both on your, you know, in your arsenal so that they're kind of both blending. I don't know if I'm making sense today. Let's say yes. I'm having trouble with words. <laughs> Not too bad. Not too bad? Okay. How are you doing? Okay. There we go. Good. I'm doing great. You? Yeah, doing good. It's a fun day to paint. And this is a fun subject to do. So right underneath my tree, I want a really bright yellow spot down here. So I'm going to get some of my cadmium yellow light, some of my white. <laughs> And just do a section right here where I'm going to put that tree. And then just make sure I blend it up into what I've got going on. And blend it out. And we've got uh, these other you know colors here now. So I can kind of lightly go over some of these areas and just blend out those transitions. Wipe my brush off. So if I got an area here where I got a little bit heavy handed with the yellow, and I didn't want to go any farther into there. I want to blend that out a little bit better. So I just wipe my brush dry and then I can kind of go over that area and see how it'll soften that up. And I can kind of just fuzzes out the edge a little bit for me. And so this is kind of what you would do if you were using like a mop brush. That's kind of the same thing. I don't use a mop brush because I just tend to, you know, use the brush I have in my hand and go back and forth and like wipe it off and use it at kind of like a mop brush would and uh, just pick up lift off color and blend the colors that way so adding some more whitish color here and I think that's going to be really nice so that'll give us a nice really pretty um, backdrop to our purple and this is a great color combination that purple and yellow are opposite on the color wheel and so they make a really stunning um, color combo when you put them together like this and normally I would say don't use the colors like in their max maximum intensity as far as like you know maximum saturation of color right side by side but there's really only a couple places where that's happening and it's like right in here and then the purple that that's used there that is not like as bright as down here so really we're only having like the max maximum purple here and the maximum yellow here they're not going to be right next to each other um, they're going to be kind of you know in the same general area but not like right up next to each other if you have you know your bright bright purple up, up next to a bright yellow, it can be a little jarring. So we're gonna kind of soften that transition between that bright, those two bright colors. I'm talking because I'm hoping this is drying. <laughs> so I'm kind of wasting time here if you're wondering like, why is she not painting? No, it's fine. I'll, I'll do down here. I need to put, I need to put my um, undertone on uh, down here. So I'll go ahead and do that while I'm waiting for my sky to dry. So, so I'm gonna get some, purple or some quinacridone burnt orange and some magenta. I grabbed some magenta and a little bit of my cadmium red light. And I'm just going to come up here and just do like this. And I really don't need to do it down over here. The only part that we're really seeing the, the red is kind of in between the rows. And then there's a little bit of it over here. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of just Fade that out like that. And then over here, I'm going to do my 
think I want to do blue under my purple. So I think I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of the doxazine purple. Do a nice like, yeah, like a really pretty blue. And again, it's going to kind of turn brown against this background, which it's fine because this is like my this is my first layer, so it's it's just my undertone. It's not going to really matter too much, but if it bothers you, you can add a little bit of white to it. To, and maybe the orange wasn't the greatest undertone for the whole canvas. I don't know. We'll see. I may decide I should have chosen another color. And the other color that I was thinking was maybe um, quinacridone magenta might have been a good undertone color, too. So, I don't know. We'll see. I need to change that. Okay, so my focal point and my my um, my vanishing point is going to be like right here. It's just off from my tree. So right here. So all the rows are going to be pointing to that pretty much. And it's actually kind of up here, up in the sky just slightly. Um, so these are all going to be kind of going to that like this, like that. And then these ones are gonna be even more dramatic like that. Um, I'll do that in a minute, but really right now I'm just kind of trying to get some color down. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this blue here, blue down over this area and that'll be good, okay. Hopefully, there we go, my blue sky my blue sky is dry. I just had to make sure my sky was dry before I could start putting my clouds in. But I'm gonna put one more layer of that brighter blue up here before I start my clouds. So, getting my brush here, cleaning it out, getting some of that ultramarine blue. And I'm gonna use glaze this time, because I don't need to put a ton of paint down here. I just need it to tint it. I just need it darker and more saturated. So I'm just going to kind of put a thin layer of color down with my glaze. It's it's not fully um fully transparent. So it's pretty, you know, it's pretty thick, but it it wouldn't cover over another color very much. Like if I tried to cover over the orange with this, it would be brown. The orange would show through quite a bit. So this is just, but since I have that lighter blue under here, it's going to let me get a nice bright blue color going on. And I'm going to get a little bit of white now. Now the white is going to change it totally because it's going to make it more, more opaque. White is super opaque. So I'd have to add more glaze, quite a bit of glaze if I wanted to leave it um, or get it to be a little bit more transparent. But not too worried about that. I just want kind of a lighter blue on this part of the sky and coming down. And I'm going to go ahead and use this lighter blue here between the transition between the, the pink and the darker blue. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. I've got a kind of a weird streak right here I want to get out. Put out the fluid blue. I got it handy there. There we go. And I'm very lightly touching this now because I don't want to pull off any color. I'm just wanting to add color and not, not pull any off here. So I think that that's going to work. I'll go ahead and clean this out. And then I'm going to grab my, I think I'm going to use the blender here. I think that should work. So I'm going to get the eight, three eighths inch blender and get a little bit of the ultramarine blue, a little bit of purple, and I'm going to get a little bit of this blue that had the white in it. And just use this. And this blue back here is still wet. So if you want to, you can let it dry first, but I'm just going to kind of go into it and hopefully it'll 
stick. If it doesn't stick and it just lifts the color off, that means your blue is a little bit too dry. If it's kind of in between drying, then it'll kind of just lift instead of blend. Acrylics get sticky as they dry and so is they they'll just stick to whatever you touch on them and they'll lift right off your canvas if you aren't careful. So just watch out for that. You will cry if your paints are not dry. <laughs> you will wonder why. <laughs> haiku by Mark. <laughs> That's probably not a haiku, I don't know. <laughs> the haiku is anymore. <laughs> Sounded good. I used to know. Maybe a hello coo. <laughs> yeah, hello, guys. I know. I haven't said hi. I just jumped I know, right into you're painting. Just like, you're, I'm in it. I'm you're in it today. We're oh, 25 no. minutes in. And wow. <clears throat> Sorry. Hi, <Hey>, guys. <laughs> yeah, very rude. You have all these people over to the house. You don't offer them anything to drink. <laughs> no snacks. Yeah. Not even for me. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> I'm working here. <laughs> this is a no Tupperware party. <laughs> I want that. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> her favorite, favorite, favorite line from Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> Oh gosh, that's so funny. Okay. <laughs> I digress. I'm adding, making kind of a red here with the magenta and a little bit. And I still have a little bit of that purple in there. I think I even grabbed a little orange. So just kind of making a, a color here that's kind of a reddish tone. And I'm not loving that. Can use a little bit of the white and glaze with this. Just make kind of a softer version of itself and kind of use it to sort of fluff out the edges a little bit. And you can also grab this background color, which was kind of that orangey peach color, and use it kind of next to and around some of these and kind of push the color around and softly blend out those edges with that too if you have if you've saved I, I would if you can try to save some of these background colors that you used I didn't really do a very good job of that but it really does help when you're doing your clouds to be able to have some of those background colors to sort of blend into okay And then over here, the colors are a little bit more saturated. They're a little bit brighter, kind of purpley toned. So I'm going to get some magenta and some white. And just a little bit. Of, I'm going to go ahead and grab my light purple there. Make a light purple. And then I'm also going to have like a little bit of the ultramarine blue here. So I have kind of a bluish magenta and blue purple which is the sky color ultramarine blue you know so it'll be a nice color to use with this blend nicely okay I'm just gonna kind of start up here my blue is dry-ish so it should let me lay down color so I think we need to do a video <coughs> where we don't post the image ahead of time. Okay. And people have to guess what you're painting. Oh, that's a good idea. Because looking at this painting here, mm -hmm. okay, we would have gotten it that it was a landscape, you know, relatively early, but mm -hmm. not sure what else it was going to be right at this point. What? Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. That's a good idea. I think that'd be really fun. Uh -huh. What is she painting? And Can if, you guess? if I do the painting, people will still be guessing when I'm done. <laughs> it's like when I used to do this at the church, when I would get oh, yeah. up on Sunday mornings and do, I would do um, during the worship service, I would, or sometimes all through the service, I would be painting something. 
Um, <clears throat> I did that for a few years and here and there, you know, just for special events and things. And uh, sometimes people would come up to me afterwards and be like, I thought you were painting a fire hose until I saw it was arms. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> that was like my favorite. <laughs> it was like, yes, a I'm fire sure, hose. Like, freaking people out. They're probably not even at all paying attention to what's being said. They're just <laughs> being like, what the heck is that? <laughs> distracting so <laughs> don't do that anymore <laughs> oh gosh that's a great idea I like that idea mystery painting what is she painting yeah do it once a month do prizes or something <laughs> <You know? laughs> But I mean, if people say flowers, I mean, I mean you, you got to do something that's a little outside your norm mm, if you're going to do okay. that. That's true. I got to think about how I would paint it so that it's not so obvious. Mm -hmm. But then I wouldn't really be able to t teach it. It would have to be just demonstration because I couldn't tell them why we were, what we were drawing or, you know, mm -hmm. anything too. I'd have mm -hmm. to just be kind of like. You could do it like you see those, those videos that are posted to the person is doing something and then they rotate it 180 degrees. And oh. I was like, oh, it's no, a cat. I can't. I can't. Oh. I well, wouldn't be able to figure it out. Well, that we would... could we could just flip the image on the on the video oh, feed. Oh, that's true. They could be watching me paint it upside down. Yeah. There you go. Maybe they are right now. They just don't know it. They would just be holding their phones upside down. <laughs> Do you think they would cheat like that? I, don't, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Getting some cadmium orange here and just adding some orangey highlights to this. And then grabbing some cadmium red light too to do that in some places here. This is nice. I love that. I like painting clouds. It can be a little daunting, and I think that the thing that gets a little scary is because, like, you know, especially when you're going over light air and you've got this really obvious line here, sometimes it can look kind of harsh and unnatural. So, um, again, sometimes having that background color to help blend it, blend it can help. So, um, like for right in here, say I can take now my this orange that's on my brush here, grab some of this yellow that's in the sky, and just kind of blend through and smudge that out a little bit. It just kind of helps blend those clouds out. I just find that it looks a little bit better when I do that, you know, get it down there and then kind of just go back through and sort of smudge it out so that's a little bit softer blend, softer transitions. I think that that's important with clouds. It's just having these kind of smudgy, smudgy transitions between colors, not no hard edges. And I can just do that with this dry brush while it's wet. I'm not adding any color here. I've just got kind of a dry brush here, and I'm just kind of smushing that paint around so that it's blending a little bit and softening up. And I've seen artists use map, mop brushes to do that too. You know, you do this kind of thing and then use a mop brush and kind of go over the colors with the mop brush to soften them up a little bit, smudge them out. All right, so that's pretty good. I want a little bit more of a darker magenta in these areas here, I think. More of a magenta purple. So I'm gonna get a little bit more, a little bit of purple. Like more of a, it's actually kind of almost just purple now that I'm looking at it. There's not a whole lot of magenta in it. A little bit of white. And I think once I get my purple, I might add it to my clouds up here, too. So I'm going to add that in here. There we go. My blue may be a little bit dark in my sky here, too. I might need to 
blend that out some. I'm gonna get my, no, I think I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get some white, a little bit of my ultramarine blue. Just gonna kind of go over this area with a little bit of white ultramarine blue mixture. There we go. Just soften up that little area there in that corner. I think it darkened because that orange that was underneath again just kind of affecting the colors on top somewhat. Okay. Getting some yellow or some cadmium red light and magenta and some white here and I'm going to add some really bright reddish pink clouds up here. to the pink. I think that's really nice. Add in a nice bright pop color. That white is helping it show up against that darker background. There we go. Just a little bit of white in there with that red just to make it stand out. And then I can kind of use this color and just kind of smudge out the bottoms of some of these if I need to transition them. Soften that blend out. All right. Yeah, so the this needs to be, it, the one of two things need to happen. Either my sky needs to go lighter, the blue needs to go lighter, or my clouds need to go darker because they're not being, they're not showing up. So I'm just going to get a little bit darker purple here with my magenta and just go a little bit darker with this in this area so that it shows up. I can always go back in and add some white in here in places, but it, it'll help it kind of show up if I kind of go a little bit darker with it. Okay, there we go. Now I can see it. I think my blue might be a little bit bright or a little bit dark in my sky there. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna make sure they got this area nice and dark here too. I'm gonna use this purple. It's got a little bit of the magenta in it. Give it another tone. That's nice. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the sky and the clouds. I'm gonna leave them. And I'm pretty happy with the intensity of the yellow. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of white, a little bit more of a really bright shock of color right here. So a little bit of white with my cadmium yellow light. I'm just gonna go right here, right behind that tree, right where it's gonna be really bright. I just want it to show up kind of behind the trunk of the tree and then kind of fade out over here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to the clouds over here. Be getting touched by some yellow. Okay, nice. All right, so let's go ahead and draw in our lavender fields. That way we can kind of know where to do our rows. So I'm going to get use a ruler to kind of help me stay on track here. And I'm just going to kind of pick a spot that is my focal point. So it doesn't matter where or my, you know, a vanishing point, I should say, not focal point. But I'm going to do it right here. And going to come out. So this right about here is going to be my vanishing point. So these lines should point to it and they'll get a little wider as they come up and out. 
And actually, wait, nope, this one, okay, I didn't do this wide enough. This one actually is wider than it, I made it. So it actually comes out like this. And then the next one is kind of like right above the corner there. And coming out there. And then there's just one little one here. I'm not even seeing the... Okay, there we go. And then the next one here. Again. Just figuring out where that's going to be. I'm going to kind of round that out and do this all the way out to here. That's going to be my next row. It's going to be from right here to about right, right in here somewhere. And then the next one is going to be over here. It's going to be all the way out to like here. And then there's going to be another one here. And these are going to get smaller as they go away from us. There we go. Something like that. It's amazing, the perspective. It's crazy. It like, plays with your brain. It plays with my brain. I don't know about you guys. Alright, so I'm going to get my dark purple and blue and just kind of mark out my rows here. It would be a really short game if you play with my brain. <laughs> Really short game. Yeah, you're. I uh, notice you're not even arguing. You, you're kind of agreeing <laughs> with that. Actually. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You're not. You're not that a game person. It makes sense. Yeah, you don't like games. Yeah. So if it played with my brain, it'd be like. some of the lighter purple here just so I kind of have a, an idea of where the top of these are because I don't have it somewhere like this and there's going to be I would think at this point people would know it's lavender. Yes. I would hope. I would think so. I would think we get to this point, and we'd have some guesses, mm. some correct guessing happening. That's true. There are some things, though, especially certain animals, that could be very fun to play with people's brains mm -hmm. leave the eyes out to the last you know leave mm -hmm. leave certain features out <laughs> yeah <laughs> got me thinking I wish I hadn't mis covered up all of my orange in here. I kind of didn't leave myself a lot to work with as far as this goes. I probably should have just waited till I had it drawn out here to know where to put the darker colors, but yeah, it's working. All right, so go a little bit over here. Somebody would watching said that they have a lavender farm, so that's pretty cool. I'd be interested to see pictures of that. I mean, how do you even get into that? That's pretty neat. Like, do they sell the cut flowers? Do they sell them to shops to, like, make sense, you know, for, like, lavender-scented 
Well, there's a lot of stuff that's lavender scented for a sleepy time. I have a lavender scented face face uh, cream thing that I sometimes wear at night. The lavender is a little strong, though. I don't. Maybe it came from their farm. I like it, but I don't love it. Like you know, strong. I'm not too strong. What? Maybe it came from their farm. That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's what they do. Like if that's what they sell. I'm curious to know if they sell it, sell the actual plants, or sell the flowers, or sell like all parts of it. Maybe just lavender NFTs. Huh? Maybe lavender NFTs. NFTs. <laughs> Okay. I still don't get what that stuff does, it, how you do that. It's digital but something. Yeah. It's so. digital propriety. <sighs> don't start. <laughs> don't, don't even go there. All right, I'm going to add back some of my orange that I took out there. I kind of want little pops of that orange peeking through. Took out a lot of it. All right, a little bit of magenta and purple here. And... Go ahead and yeah, nice. Getting the darker purple here and going along the sides with some of that. that's got the white mixed in and kind of just go on the top of this row and sort of add some highlights there just across kind of rocking it back and forth creating layers of lighter color I'm going to do it on this one too just tapping back and forth I think it's especially effective with this orangey color in between too. It really makes it pop. That lavender color. And then back in here, I'm just gonna kind of use a I'm gonna grab the unbleached titanium and grab some of this reddish color that I already had mixed up from the sky. Just using whatever color I still have left over here. And just adding some grassy like things back there. I need it darker so I'm going to get some magenta and some of the burnt orange and just kind of pull up and create some little areas back there. it over the top of the horizon line there so I'm getting some kind of grass like stuff happening getting some more of that unbleached titanium Put like little track lines there in those two paths to make it look like a tank drove Tank. through there. <laughs> so I could. 
could. Thanks. I appreciate it. Not not going to. <laughs> going to get a little bit of my cadmium red light and my burnt orange. And I'm just going to pick a spot for my tree. So I think we decided it was going to be like right in here. So I'm going to kind of start that tree trunk with this color. And I'm going to switch to my Deerfoot stippler and just stipple out some the shape of my tree here with this color. And go ahead and do this whole tree with this kind of light. I'm just going to tap down some color. And just push it around. I just want it along the edges. We'll go in with the darker color. Get a little bit more of the burnt orange. Up here at the top, maybe. Whatever color shape you want of your tree. I like the I like the trees that kind of come out flat on the bottom and then sort of round up. So I think I'm gonna make mine a little bit more of that shape just because I can. And then get a little bit of the burnt umber and some purple. And then really load it up on the tip of the brush here. And I'm just going to touch the tip down to try to get some nice fuzzy edges here. And in the middle of the tree, it's going to be mostly dark, but there'll be little bits of the sky peeking through. So magenta purple and brown. I'm trying to kind of leave these little open spots that I've created. And then make sure that I'm going just inside my red along the edges here on some of these areas. So I've got a lot of the reddish color around the outside of my tree. It looks like it's glowing. And then I'm going to get this color and just go through the middle of my tree trunk with it and create some branches coming through. Not, not a whole lot of branches visible in this tree, but just a little bit, especially on the tree trunk there, leaving just a little bit of that red around the outside of it. And this is the way, like, you know, you may think, oh, that's a black tree, but this is a way of really, like, making it much more colorful and fit with the rest of the theme of the painting. It's just a really much prettier way of creating a, a black. It is, it is essentially black, but it's a chromatic black, it's called. So it's mixed up with colors instead of being a true black. It's a colorful black. It's got colors that have created it, the purple and the brown. Let me go ahead and kind of bring this down just a little bit right here. I'm going to get some more of that orangey color. Cadmium red light. Here we go. There we go. Okay. I'm going to stop there, I think. I want to go too close to the horizon line with it. All right, you can zoom out if you want. One more thing, though, before we finish this, I'm going to get some of my orange and my cadmium red light, and I'm going to do my glow along the tops of my lavender field.
It looks it looks like crap right now, but it'll look better once we get it blended in. I'm gonna Sorry, get. I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> 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 that was perfect. <laughs> All right, using quinacridone magenta to transfer or blend that out into my purple. <laughs> she doesn't know how to answer crap. <laughs> how to well, make it look better. How to make it look better. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so quinacridone magenta. Again, finding the color that kind of transitions best between your two colors that are meeting. So purple in this case and that um, purple and the cadmium, or cadmium red light and cadmium orange that we used along there. We're wanting to transition to the purple, which is the magenta. That, that's why I put it, my colors out the way that I do so that I have my transition colors next to each other so that the color wheel, you know, each color on the color wheel is next to its, you know, the next color over, if that makes sense. And uh, then I can you know, this purple and the, uh, the quinacridone magenta is going to be, you know, good transition to my purple for this color. I'm going to go ahead and put some of this color in my field in the ground here. And then I'm going to get some of my cadmium or my unbleached titanium. Mix in some of my orange, orangey color. And I'm just going to kind of create some little, little bits of lighter dirt. I'm getting smaller as it gets closer up here. Okay. Looks good. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna use this color over here too. I've already kind of used it. Get a little bit more of the darker magentas and just have a little bit of a little bit more contrast back in here. I feel like it needs it. Alright. Well yeah, look at how nicely that orange looks like with our tree though. Isn't that pretty? It just makes it really, really nice and glowy. need to make sure that I'm keeping these brushes wet so that the paint doesn't dry out in them until I can get them cleaned out properly with soap. All right. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and stick with this blender brush. It seems to be working pretty well for me, but I am going to clean off my palette because I'm run out of room. And I didn't need my Indian yellow hue. I haven't used it at all, so... Just it's a waste. And same with my burnt sienna. The burnt orange is a good comp uh, substitute for it in this case, so I haven't used it either. actually I said I was going to use that other one but I think I'm, I lied I'm going to use this and I'm going to make a green get some cadmium yellow light and my yellow blue and I'm going to use some quinacridone burnt orange just to make it more neutral 
I'm just going to add just a little bit of this in a few places and especially down in this foreground I'm seeing some greens peeking through so I'm just going to kind of pop in a few little green greens in here It'll just give us a little bit extra color story happening. Okay, that looks good. Wipe that off. Clean that out. And then, yeah, let's go ahead and go back to this brush here. And I'm going to start with this fluorescent color and I'm going to mix um, some of the um, bright purple with it. It's it's pretty dark back here. I don't know. It's not going to work. Let me get a... I want magenta and purple. Doxazine purple and magenta mixed together and then some white. And then let me see if I can make a interesting purple with my ultramarine blue and doxazine purple, or I'm sorry, ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. A little bit more blue. To add some white to it. All right, so that's an interesting color. I want a little bit more blue. There we go. So we've got a nice, really pretty bluish purple and more of the violet purple here. And then we'll do the just doxazine purple with white here for more just a straight up purple tone. All right, so we'll have some different purples to play with here. And you can mix up other purples, you know, try different color combinations. Um, I like the I like the quinacridone burnt orange with magenta for like a burgundy. I don't have enough magenta left to make it. I'm going to put out some more of the doxazine purple too because we're running low on that. Before I get started, it'll just help to have the colors already ready to go. And I think I want um, a color I don't have on my color wheel here or my color palette, but I like to use for in these kind of cases, especially with oranges, is um, light ultramarine blue, which is just ultramarine blue plus white. So I'm just going to put some of that out because it's going to be a nice like go-to color that I could just grab for highlights. Today. Yeah, the allergy meds have got me kind of mellowed out here. <laughs> Is that the key? I just need to drug you. <laughs> <laughs> One of my friends was watching, um, Lane was watching my um, staircase garden the other day. She was like, she was laughing because I was on drugs during that. It was right after my, my oral surgery and so I was on powerful painkillers. <laughs> She's like... Uh, she's like, it was fun watching you paint on drugs. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was interesting, for sure. <laughs> I'm fine. That's the thing. It's like when I'm, you know, on them, I don't really feel it and then until I get off of them. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, that was, did some weird stuff. <laughs> Said some weird things. Uh, those things are scary. I don't want to be on them for any extra length of time than I absolutely have to, for sure. All right, so adding some magenta here to the quinacridone burnt orange, and then a nice color, and then I'm going to add some white. I'm just going to grab some of this white that already has a little bit of purple in it, and look at that nice color. So it's just like a really pretty mauve -y 
pinkish tone. Very nice. So that'll be kind of a nice neutral color to throw in there, maybe. We'll see. I'm, we may not need it, but I just wanted to mix it because I like the color. You never know. I like to kind of mix these kind of colors. Yeah, it looks good down here. I like to mix these kind of like multiple tones of colors just to kind of use uh, when I get going because it's, it's always nice to have options, you know. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and mix up some magenta heavy um, pink here too. So just add some white to my magenta and maybe grab a little bit of this purple that we mixed up before with the magenta and add it to it. So we've got a really bright purpley magenta. This is the more purple version, but there we go. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with this color because this is that warmer tone up by the horizon line. I'm just going to kind of tap in, make sure that I leave plenty of the darker color. I'm going to get some actual magenta just straight up and kind of use it to tint in between here. <clears throat> Might bring this up just a little bit more right here. perfect color. It's nice and bright. Not too bright. So this is the uh, undock. Okay. Reset. This is quinacridone magenta with white and a little tiny touch of purple. About halfway down, I'm going to start to actually like show some detail. So, well, back in here, I'm just tapping, just random tapping basically. Go ahead and do this one. Isn't that nice. Get a little bit of magenta and adding that in. Not just the light magenta, but it's got a little bit of regular magenta in there too. Pretty. Pretty, pretty. I like it. I was looking through April's paintings and I was like, I painted a lot of really fun stuff. <laughs> I love getting to the end of the month and kind of looking back on what we painted and how they turned out and it's just like we painted some really fun stuff. I hope you guys, if you missed out on some of the ones we did, I hope you go back and check them out because we've got some really fun projects. Some of my most favorite that we've done so far, some of the bird nest series and I've decided to go ahead and do another bird nest. Yes. I hope you guys aren't tired of them, but I, I they just make me happy. So. I've been really enjoying that series, so I hope you guys have too. And um, I haven't started, I haven't put out my schedule yet, but if you are part of my newsletter, we sent out a little preview last night, um, or today, actually this morning. We got it done late. I was up till 2. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, this is how tired I was last night when I was making my schedule. <laughs> I was up till about 2 in the morning, and... Trying to get my schedule finally set for May so that I could put it in my newsletter. And uh, my Patreon group, I'm making a dark purple here with the 
uh, the, Mark knows what I'm going with now. Because I can see it in the newsletter. Is it in the newsletter? Oh, God. So, yeah, I, I didn't catch it before the newsletter went out this morning. I guess I was telling Mark about, you know, that my, my Facebook group um, for patrons, my $10 level group, voted on what they wanted to see for their challenge images c- coming up. And the winner was continental animals. So we're going to do a series for them of animals with continents, right? And so I was like, okay, the first one, I had a, I had a picture of a, of a, um, a white peacock that I thought would be a good like start, you know. And so I wanted to put other animals around it. And so I looked it up and peacock was from India. And so I'm like, okay, we're going to do Asia. So <laughs> I started out with a panda yeah. check. Yeah. And then I added a tiger check. check. And then I added a baboon, which is is an Asian animal. Not sure exactly where from. I think India area maybe. And then I. <laughs> and then here, show the picture. <laughs> and then I added <laughs> the native <laughs> giraffe. Giraffe. <laughs> I don't know why. I was thinking. <laughs> and she was all proud. She was telling me before the show. <laughs> so and then she's like, "Wait a minute." Wait a minute. <laughs> Africa. Oh, God. Help me. Oh, yeah. So that, that was my 2 a.m. brain coming up with that brilliant, brilliant. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I'm going to have to redo that. Uh, One of these things is not like the others. One of these things does not be belong. <laughs> oh, gosh. I'm sorry. It just tickles me. I was like, oh, I don't know why I, I, I just I just had a mental block this month and just could not figure out what to paint this month, and so the I decided to the Asian giraffe. <laughs> yeah, you know, because you have like, a, wait a minute. you have Asian That's tigers Africa. and African Africa's not African tigers. That's not African. Yeah, yeah that's not drive. part of Asia, is it? Oh my gosh, I need to get out more. I blame. I blame COVID. <laughs> so I just put up the link to your website there, thankfulart.com, mm-hmm. where you can sign up for the newsletter <clears throat> and get some factual pictures <laughs> that you won't see anywhere else in the world in the news. Right. They've been lying to you this whole time. Giraffes are your schools. From Asia. Oh, everything oh. you've ever thought was real <laughs> is debunked in our newsletter. I'm sure. I wonder how people are going to be so confused. Like, I think she, I think she means maybe Africa, but I don't know. Oh, gee. I don't know. I will fix it. Oh, this is what I get for procrastinating. Honestly, didn't procrastinate. I just couldn't figure out what to do. Some months are like that. I I have too many options. I'm like, it's not that I don't have stuff I want to paint. It's just that I have too many options and I don't know what to choose. You know, too, sometimes too many options are worse than not enough. You know, that's my problem. So, yeah, that, that happened. Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. I'll fix it. I'm sure. And Brennan, of course, being as super. Um, he just went with it. Yeah, he's he's just like okay. He didn't say. Um, well, I don't think you've been probably noticed. You know, he just was like, okay. She says to send it out. I will send it out. So we know Brennan is a yes man. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan is, don't even say that. <laughs> Until you're ready to do what he does, put up with me <laughs> all the time. Poor Brennan's a saint. What did he say? Is this the same thing about me? What? 
I'm using the darker purple here to kind of mark the rose a little bit better. What? That I wonder if he says the same thing about me. <laughs> you're a saint. <laughs> no, you don't get to say that. So, are you looking for uh, people to submit their own pictures? Yeah, they can. They sure can. I, that's that's how I found some of the ones yeah. that I'm using this month. So, because I know, like today, we have people obviously from Australia and Canada and yeah, Europe yeah. And Send Asia. me some animals from your region. I'd love it. Yeah. Well, when they're not going to be on YouTube though, they're going to be on my with my Patreon stuff because there's they're just too complicated i can't right. do those kind of paintings on youtube it's just it'd be it's going to take multiple weeks to get them done so can't do it on the youtubes no just it's not feasible right. it just doesn't they don't do well and youtube doesn't really show them to people speaking of if you wouldn't mind sharing sharing our youtube channel liking subscribing if you haven't already and just uh uh, making sure that if you like the video, what happens is YouTube like it's like oh they like this one maybe somebody else that likes to paint you know will like it too and they'll share my videos more often with other people so it really does help our channel it's a small thing but it does make a big difference for our channel and um, helps us the algorithm must have changed recently because it's like our numbers have plummeted this month and I've seen it in a lot of bigger channels and they're I think they're promoting smaller channels which is great for the smaller channels I'm super happy for them they need it but they're also making it so that really subscribers don't matter like it doesn't matter that we have you know 300 plus thousand subscribers they're not showing our videos to those 300,000 <laughs> subscribers. We'd be getting a lot bigger numbers on our videos if they were. So, um, so it really does help. And we really, really, really appreciate those who make it an effort to watch our videos weekly and, and comment and have been for years. We've got lots of, lots of folks that have been really, really di diligent and faithful and helped grow our channel over the years. And we so appreciate you guys getting us. To this point and getting it to where that you know we're talking about maybe even having mark quit and what? help me full time so we're very what getting very what? close to that mm -hmm. and it's definitely due to you guys who watch our show and like our videos and all that stuff we appreciate it so 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 much it's amazing so we've had a lot of people comment over the years i mean we've even had people kind of fall asleep during the live show uh -huh. because your voice is so yeah. calming and soothing uh -huh. so if anybody has friends who suffer from insomnia they they can recommend angela <laughs> to be on a playlist to help them fall asleep <laughs> you know youtube doesn't know if they're watching or not just it's it's, it's playing true. so it's there true. you go <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to kind of do some actual like lavender flowers down here low. And I'm using, I just w added white to this light purple that I had down here. Now, this is not going to look like the right color right now. Um, but what I'm going to do is kind of put this down and then I'm going to go back over it with the brighter purples. Just, just giving it a little bit of highlight color here. This may be wrong. I don't know. We'll see. I may be just trying it. Don't know until you try. I was talking to one of my patrons who pays for a monthly consultation on her video or her, on her what she's painting and through Patreon. And, and um, we had a nice long chat the other day. And she just said, you know. Because I was complaining about one of my paintings, you know, having to change something on it, you know, because I it didn't work out the way I had planned, you know. And she said that it actually helps her when she sees that because she's like she knows what to look out for and be like, oh, okay, if I if I don't, you know, if I don't finish the background before I do this next step, then 
you know, then this might happen, you know, what happened to me or whatever it was. I think it was talking about the lotus flower video and how the petals in the back weren't quite the correct color. And so I went back and changed them, but then realized that it was harder to change them than I expected it to be, you know. And so um, and I'm using this kind of more mauve toned pink. This this one had the magenta, quinacridone magenta in it um, to kind of do the next transition. So um and kind of fanning it out a little bit so it's kind of doing this fan shape here makes sense I'm going to use this color over here bring it out a little bit up and see how it's important to have this dark dark behind it otherwise this this step is not going to show up because you won't have that dark color underneath to transition so as we're getting back here I'm just going to kind of use the fan brush and sort of dab it I don't know if I like that I don't really like that but basically you know it's it's not a science that it, what we're doing here you know I mean I and especially because I'm painting these live so I haven't painted these ahead of time and, you know, I, I don't know exactly if what I've got in my brain is going to work as I get it going, you know, as I'm painting it. Sometimes if I've painted something multiple times, then I kind of have a better idea of what, you know, what's going to happen. And I can anticipate the way the paint's going to work and, you know, if my how my layers are, are going to work out and what colors I want to use and that kind of thing. But, um most of the time I'm just figuring it out as I go you know and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work like I think it's going to and that's when I get a little frustrated because I feel like it's you know it's you guys are following along so it's a little harder to follow along I feel like if you if you see me make a mistake or you know have to change something and I've already shown you a different way of doing it you know so I try to be aware of that and try not to Try not to make mistakes. I don't know, but I'm human. It happens, and um, and they're not even really like ne necessarily mistakes. They're only really really mistakes when you're teaching it. <laughs> because when I'm when I'm painting, you know, just for myself, I'm just jumping in. I don't I don't really worry about exactly how it's gonna go. I just change things as I go and. If I don't like it, I change it, and then I keep trying new things, and I kind of experiment as I go, and I just kind of am a little bit more free about it. When I'm teaching it, I want to be a little bit more methodical and, you know, make sure that I have sort of better steps for you guys to follow so you can, it's easier for you to follow, and I'm not jumping all over the place as much as when I do it just for myself, so that makes sense. But um, the challenge images like with the colorful dogs that we did recently and different ones. I've been more doing things a little bit more on my speed. So they've been kind of seeing a little bit more of my normal process, which is just a little bit more haphazard and jumping in and kind of changing things as I go and trying new things and being a little bit more sporadic about it. So I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying... Oh, Basima um, was just saying, she's the person I was talking to, she was saying that it helps her. It actually does help her to see me make mistakes because then I, she can figure out how to fix them herself. And, and she can look out for those things when she's painting it so she can, you know. So I would definitely say if you're going to be painting along with me that you watch the video fully before you start it and take notes as I'm painting. And then that way you can kind of, if there are things that I change or, you know, the things that don't work and I say, okay, watch out for this, um, then it, then it, it'll be easier for you to follow along later. That makes sense, but. All right. And also if you make notes too, then you, you have your color mixes and things figured out ahead of time too. And you can kind of, uh, anticipate better what I'm doing it, it'll take it'll be shorter in the long run if you watch it all the way through and then paint along than if you try to paint along live with me for the first time I think because 
things change as I, you know, as I work. Okay, so figuring out where this one goes. Really, this one needs to come out farther. I didn't bring this one out far enough. Because this one's supposed to go all the way off over here. I don't want to, I'm getting a little bit um, off camera on them too, too tight. Didn't see any of that. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit solid there with my coverage, so I want to be sure that I don't do too much. And I may switch to a little bit different brush because this one's kind of big. there though it's getting there it's, it's close closer okay so now I'm gonna get the magenta or the the fluorescent purple and kind of start tapping that in in places lacking is depth you see I'm kind of having a lot of mid middle ground values but I don't have a lot of lighter values which there's not a ton of lighter values on this lavender it is kind of a darker scene since it's sunsets so these are kind of backlit and a little bit dark but I think I want to add just a little bit more highlights through the middle so what I might do is use that um, light ultramarine blue for that it's a lighter value color but it's still got a lot of that purple tone in it and it'll look like a good like kind of purpley value to use there see there some different rows like try to get a little bit of more of a plant looking you know roundedness in some places loving this too much. I don't know. I don't think I like that lighter purple that I put in there. And I think I need to add a little bit more of that darker purple. I'm going to use the magenta with the purple 
back here. Just add that back in here a little bit more. Yeah, and I think I'm gonna use it here too. See how it got all dark right there, or all light, I mean. A little bit of That can happen if you just keep layering on color after color after color. You can end up with, you know, just a little bit. It just, all the background color goes solid and then you end up with just a, just a solid mass of light color. It's an hour and a half, we're doing good. Are you doing okay? You're over there sighing. I'm doing great. I'm tired. It's almost nap time. Is it? Okay. But I got flower bits to build. Oh, don't worry about it. We can do that tomorrow. You deserve a nap. <laughs> you hardly ever take any. You don't know what I do. Well, I'm at work through the week. That's true. You nap at work. Just don't tell them that. Don't nap in the weekends. Don't, don't tell them that. Well, not Live while you're work. supposed to be working. You're napping right. on your lunch breaks. Right. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have woken myself up snoring during lunch a few times. <laughs> down here between the lavender and that backfield there. And if it's not coming off your brush, just add a little water to your paint. If the fan brushes tend to work a little bit better if your paint's a little more fluid. So adding a little bit more water. It's going to come off a little bit better for me. And then they'll leave a little bit of dark, darker color, and then adding in my highlight along the top there. All right, we're getting very close here. And there's a, so there's another field right here. So there's three that are kind of really tightly packed right here. One here, one here, and then one here. my colors are much more blue than I'm seeing in my photographs so I'm going to if I let this dry what I can do is grab my magenta here and my glaze and just go back over my areas with my glaze this is where I was saying, you know, I'm going to use that lighter color here and then go back over it. If I have that lighter color underneath there, then when I do this, it brightens, it picks up that white in it. Now it looks brighter. Okay, this is nice. So this is going to get us closer to where we want to be color-wise magenta over the top of these blues and 
lighter purples and things. You, you may you may have gotten yours closer to the color you want it. You can even leave it this blue too. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be exactly like I'm seeing in the photo. You can do however you like it. Whatever colors work for you. So if you want yours to be a little bit more purple, you can leave it. You can do this if you want it a little bit more this reddish reddish purple more the fuchsia and I think it's only looking fuchsia because of the sky the sunset color that red is tinting so we're just basically like washing over the purples here and making them more color of the sunset These were all dry enough that they were covering over pretty nicely. And then I can go back in with my just magenta and really like add really bright pops of brighter magenta in places. It's going to look almost red because of the other colors we're using. Which is totally fine. Look at how nice that is. I like it. And if you have a fluorescent like rose, we could try that. Go for a fluorescent pink, fluorescent magenta, any of those. You don't want to mix your fluorescents though, so I'm just going to do this by itself and then do my magenta ones on their own. Now, why don't you want to mix them? Because they won't be as fluorescent if you mix them. They lose their fluorescing for some reason. I don't know if it's a chemical reaction or what, but... Don't want to mix fluorescence. That's what I've been told, at least. Or that's what I read on the bottle, so... <laughs> I haven't tested it really. I haven't used fluorescence a whole lot in my paintings at all really. I'm gonna do, I wanna do a bright pink. I'm gonna do some white with my magenta here. Do some bright pink. And I think I'm gonna use this Deerfoot Stippler. Just, yeah. Hit the middle of that with the magenta and white mixture. Kind of where I did the red, or the, I mean the blue. I'm kind of going back over those areas with this color. And honestly, it, you can stop at any point that it, now that you're done, you know, that you are happy with it. I'm just making small edits here to give it a little bit more depth, but it can be done whenever you're happy with it. Yeah, I like that. Lighter colors a little bit better. I'm liking that. Okay, and then I'm gonna get that fluorescent.
fluorescent rose. Put some of that in there. Ooh, that's bright. Yeah, I like that. Okay. I'm going to use these only where I want the color to be the brightest. So kind of just in these first couple rows here. And I can see right, especially in through here, I've got like no depth at all. So I'm probably going to have to add some dark back in right there and get that magenta burgundy color. <coughs> and then just sit down and touch it, flick it, flick it up, and get some purple magenta. have good dark values dark middle light values all three important to have depth kind of throws off the balance you don't have all three Okay, I'm pretty much, I don't want to overdo. I, I tend to want to do more than I need to. I'm going to, I think I'm going to get a liner brush though and just put back in just a few little bits of this green that we had earlier. Added a little bit of the burnt orange to it to make it a little bit more neutral and I'm going to add just a little bit of white so that it stands out a little bit and I'm just going to add little little flicks of this in here just in a couple places doesn't have to be real obvious but I just want a few little bits of green kind of popping in here especially in some of these darker areas Maybe. I'll just kind of tap off where they come touch into the purple and that way they kind of disappear down into the plant a little bit. And zoom in over here and I'll show what I'm talking about. Right here. It's good. Okay, so I'm going to do a few stems here, but it's real obvious where they're starting right here, so I'm just going to kind of tap with my finger and pull, pull that down. And then they kind of disappear down into the plant a little bit. You're not seeing it. It's too shiny. That side cam needs to be at a different angle or something. It's not, it's not showing anything. I can't see what's happening. Okay. Even 
on this main camera. Well, you were kind of going off camera so I zoom back out. Right. Well, I already sent, I had already shown. I didn't need it okay. still zoomed in. I showed what I wanted to show. I'm going to get some of this brighter purple there and some white and my magenta. Make a light pink. I think I already had some and I'm going to just find a few little buds and just sort of tap, tap in some some flowers that are more obvious here. Okay, I feel like I kind of overdid these, but they're getting there. Got a lot of layers of paint is what's happening, and so there's kind of getting to the point where they don't want to lay down any more paint until it all dries. So kind of pretty neat, much need to stop here in a minute because it's not going to lay down more paint for me until these layers all dry really well. They're just getting kind of sticky, you know. So, it happens. That's normal. Just I'm trying to do, you know, seven layers in an hour, and they don't they don't want to dry that fast. You know, all in this one little area here, they're just gonna want a little time to dry, and I'm not giving it to them. I'm just keep on add more colors. But I think these little dots are helping, kind of give it a little bit more shape. So. just to the foreground area. I'm only doing it in these plants that are really close down here just to kind of create these little plants that are sticking up here. I like it though. I think it's turned out pretty good. Pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and bring these up over the These ones that are closest to us are kind of coming out over the edges here. Using that fluorescent and kind of Tapping some of those in with these so they're not just that lighter pink color. We got a little bit of purple in there. I like it. Okay, so I'm going to sit back here and just kind of look at it. If there's anything else I want to change, I did want to add a little bit of that purple up in my sky, so I think I'm going to get, get this fluorescent purple and use it up here. Let me see if it'll show up. Going over my purple areas there. Get a little bit of that rose pink color too. This is going to probably be bright, but I like it. Okay, this is fluorescent rose or fluorescent magenta. Different brands call it different things, but okay, nice. I like it. Okay, make it a little bit darker as it goes away from us here. So I'm just going to use some magenta with my glaze. And just this should be dry enough. Oh, let's see, it's it's not drying. It's got like 12 layers on it now. I'm just gonna darken up that top part though a little bit, just as it comes down. 
So just that little bit there and kind of stop it about halfway. So I want, and it's going, I'm going over the top of those light, col light colors that I added and that will glaze it back, darken up the color just a little bit, but also tint it to that pink color that I want it to be, the more magenta color. Okay. I'm going to go with a little bit of the cadmium red and magenta over here. Add it over here. Just the top of those. Kind of lost it. Just along the top edge there. Nice. Might go down just a little bit darker with this. So get a little bit of the burgundy magenta if I've got it. That's the quinacridone burnt orange and magenta. And some glaze. Just darken this up right in this corner here. Kind of where it touches the lavender field. Just give it a little shadow there. Okay. I think I'm going to quit. Two hours, pretty pretty darn good. I like it. I could have probably added more to the clouds, but they're good enough. Like they're not probably perfect. There's probably things that I could mess with, but well, actually I take that back. I am gonna do one thing with my sky here because I see something right here. I see some of the purple peeking through or the, not the purple, but the orange peeking through and I don't like that so I'm going to get a little bit of my my um, ultramarine blue and white there the light ultramarine blue and I'm just going to kind of add it right there I'm going to get some glaze that will help push it around a little bit while it's still wet, just kind of smushing that paint around. This brush is a little small for this. It's not really blending very well for me, but... It should be pretty much that background color, which was the light blue. I actually like that color, that light ultramarine blue color. needed one more layer of that blue on the sky so instead of doing two layers of blue in the sky to cover that orange I would do three because it, it kind of needed another layer before I did my clouds up here or just don't do your orange up here just do blue and you know you, you don't have to do that orange under layer like I did I don't know that I would do it that way again it's kind of harder to cover than I thought it would be. Well, and now I have, okay, I'm gonna have to fix this. Now I have a, like a solid line there where they two meet. So I'm gonna get some of this pinkish color and some of the blue and just in here with that. This is actually what's in the picture anyways. I don't know why I didn't do this in the first place. Wipe it out and then use it as like a mop and just kind of smush that paint around. Blend it in. Wipe it off anytime it gets into places where you don't want it to go. Wipe it off. And I'm not worried about streaks because I can just kind of push the streaks into the direction that I'm seeing the streaks in the clouds. So it's, you know, it's fine. And then I can take my wet paper towel and push back that color and reveal those clouds that are there again.
good blending tool too. I'm just using that paper towel to kind of help smush around the color. Okay, so now we have a better blend there. And uh, I like that lighter, lighter blue up back in here. So I think that worked pretty well. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that lighter blue right here. saw a spot there. I think that I must have dropped, dropped some water there or something. Had a spot that didn't didn't cover. Get a little bit of white in my glaze. Wipe that off my brush and touch up the bottoms of these clouds that I wanted a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. I do have kind of some solid areas in my in my plants here, so you can always go back in and add some dots and things if you feel like you need it. But I still didn't get it quite the same intensity, and I like I keep wanting to go to purple, and it's not really purple. I guess it's like fuchsia. And so I keep like trying to paint it purple and then it does it doesn't look right. <laughs> so uh, that's my problem. I don't know. I'm trying to get it to be a color that it's not wanting to be. So it's really closer to this this bright pink, hot pink almost color here in in reality. And so instead of the fluorescent purple. I think the rose is actually probably closer to the color we're seeing in there, the fluorescent magenta color. All right, I'm going to call that good though. I, I had fun with this one. I hope you guys liked it too. And again, let, let me know in comments. Leave a, leave a comment, share the videos on your social media. I mean, even just like, you know, posting it. Um, you know, to your Facebook page. The little share button makes it really easy as long as you've got, if you're logged in on your device, it'll just take you right to your, you know, social media. If you don't want to clog up your feed, I totally get that though. So, you know, you do you, but it does help our channel. So I appreciate when you do that. Super chat. Excellent. Super chat. Yes. Okay, we had some early super chatters that unfortunately have fell off the oh. queue here. So, <clears throat> anyways, the first one was from an old friend, Johanna. Oh, hi, Johanna. And it says, just saying good afternoon and that you guys are awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Johanna. Johanna sent us some really nice plates or uh, dishes that we yeah. use all the time. Thank yes. you. Thank you. <laughs> and then we had a donation from Joy Lynn. And says, thanks for all you teach us and Mark's jokes. Aw, Joy Lynn? Yep. Thank you, Joy Lynn. Thank you. <laughs> Even and if you do like dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we have from Cindy. And she says, thank you, Angela and Mark, for great Saturdays. Aw, thank you, Cindy. Thank you so much. Thanks for hanging out with us. Yep, that's a familiar face. That's a... yeah. know your name. Patty, my one stem of lavender in my garden that is barely making it has something to aspire to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for taking your time and talent. Yeah, Patty, I'm with you. I saved my lavender plants in the garage and forgot to water them, so they're all dead. <laughs> so I'm going to have to either plant some more or buy some more, and I don't know what I'm going to do. But, yeah, I'm disappointed with myself. Okay, then we had some questions. Okay. Uh, so the first question came from... Alyssa and said, is there a good starter paint set that you could say to get or would you uh, try to buy each color individually? No, I wouldn't buy the colors individually. Let me go. Oh, let's see if I can find it. These Liquitex Basics are what, I don't have the box anymore, but the Liquitex Basics are the, it come in these little multi-packs that have um, you know, all kinds of different colors 
and most of the colors that they have will be ones that we use so they all have like quinacridone magenta so I would look and see what colors they're in the multi-pack because they have like 24 36 and 48 sizes um, and you may only need like the 24 if they've got the colors that I'm using so like the phthalo phthalo green phthalo blue magenta quinacridone magenta and cadmium yellows and reds if you've got those colors that's pretty much all you're going to need um, they probably won't have the quinacridone burnt orange or colors like that but you can always buy those separately if you need to if you decide you really like it but I wouldn't buy those colors if you're just first starting out necessarily I would just get like a multi-pack the, the Liquitex basics is what I recommend to my um, students when I was you know uh, teaching classes in person um, and then there are also these um, Windsor Newton has a really nice professional acrylic set so the Liquitex basics are like a um, beginner or like student quality set but the nice thing about the Liquitex basics is that they are using um, permanent pigments so um, they will not they won't fade um, they'll be just as light fast as the professional quality heavy body acrylics um, so that's the nice thing about the Liquitex basics there's not as much pigment but they but they um, don't um, they don't fade um, so they may not be as like intense colors or they may not mix up as intense, but they still work just fine. And then, I, in fact, I know professional artists that use Liquitex Basics as their main colors. Um, and they're a little softer bodied too, so they're a little easier to work with for a beginner. Also, Arteza has really, really great paint sets. Um, I really like their, their sets. Now their colors won't say the same as like the Liquitex Basics will have the same colors as mine. Like, so they'll have like quinacridone magenta and the, and the thalos and that kind of thing. But the Arteza colors are like things like rose and, and blue, you know, that like they'll have different names for their colors. So they won't necessarily match up what, with what I'm painting. Um, but they have great like multi-pack sets that has like every color in the rainbow just about so um, those are also ones that I definitely and I've done some Arteza videos um, for them because I really do like their colors and their colors stay really nice like I've got one that I did um, if I can find it uh, there's I think it's in here with the Arteza colors uh, is this it yes so these are the ones that I've done with the Arteza paints and um, this is the one that I was wanting to show you, but look at how bright and they have these fluorescent colors in their multi-packs. So, um, you know, th there's definitely like, um, lots of good options for students out there. And that's just like, you know, scratching the surface on the option, but those are the ones that I've personally used and like, so the Arteza and the, the Liquitex would probably be my two top choices, um, for student quality paints that I've really decided that I I like and can recommend. Okay, so that was way TMI, but okay. Will we ever inna innately know what to do, Karen? You know, Karen, um, I think so. I mean, I think that the more you do it, the more you, the more experience, it's kind of like with anything, you know, the more you do it, the more muscle memory you have. And what will happen is you won't have to think about the techniques of doing what you're doing. Like, so I don't have to stop and think about how am I going to get the paint to look the way I want it to, if that makes sense. So I can say, okay, I want dots here and I know what brushes I can grab, what tools I need and what techniques to use to get that look. Um, what, and, and also kind of just generally what colors to use because I've mixed, you know, hundreds of, hundreds of times thousands of times mix different colors um for different things and so i kind of have a natural understanding of the colors that i use the most how they're going to interact with each other and what kind of colors i can get um that just comes with practice though you know so the more you do it the better you'll get at it and the more innate it will become to you and it kind of you won't even think about the fact that you're doing it you'll just do it you know um so yes, in some ways, and then in other ways, not, because in other ways, it's still kind of a mystery. I just never know exactly how it's gonna go when I do it. I kind of have these tools, I got all the tools to do it, but you know, until I get down to actually doing the thing, I don't really know exactly how it's gonna work um, and how it's gonna come together. I just have to keep kind of 
doing what I know to do until it kind of comes together. And, you know, and again, that kind of comes with time. Um, one thing I watched the other day was um, about um, knowing your style and kind of how into having figuring out how what style of paint you you want to paint, like what what is going to be your artistic style kind of thing. And um, and basically they were saying, you know, it's really a deliberate choice. You have the choice to paint the way you want to paint. So if you have a certain way that you like to paint, you know, go out, research it, figure out what what um, kind of art you like. What is it about the art that you like and why do you like it? You know, and, um, you know, is it realism? Is it um, abstract? And if it is, then what do you need to study to, to get better at doing that thing that you like, you know? And um, I thought that that was really good advice. And it, it very, it's very similar to a book that I read called um, oh, Steal Like an Artist, I think. It's something like that. Steal Like an Artist, I believe. Um, and um, it basically said the same thing. Research the kind of art that you like or, you know, the kind of artist that you like. And that's not just music. It's or, you know, it's not just art. It's music and you know, writing and that, that kind of thing, figure out what it is about that art that you like, and then practice that, those things. Now, you're not copying that necessarily, copying that artist, although, you know, with these kind of tutorials, you're copying my style. But, you know, if you do the art of, you know, several different artists, um, or if you just like to do realism, you know, then, uh, you know, the kind of art that I do is probably going to be the kind of thing that you want to practice, you know. So anyhow, I don't know. But but I can teach you tools and things that you can use for other styles of art. Like you could use the tools that I'm teaching you for any number of different kinds of art. You don't have to do just the same kind of stuff that I'm doing with it. If that makes sense. So, OK, that's it. Sorry, that was a lot of TMI again. So I'm just going to do some fact correcting on the things that you just said there. One, Angela knows everything. And two, no, you must follow us forever. You know, <laughs> That's you, not you, true. Oh, what? oh, sorry. <laughs> what? I'm just trying some, you know, whatever. Subliminal messaging? Exactly. Okay. Uh, no, don't listen to him. <laughs> uh, would Angela use gloss varnish or more of a muted varnish satin for this particular painting? Um, You know, um, I probably would use, I like satin. I, I pretty much like just the satin varnish because it's got a little bit less of a glare, you know. So, yeah, that's probably what I would choose. Okay. Uh... Please ask a question. Does the quality of the canvas make a difference? I'm using cheaper ones now learning. Sherry. Um, yes, it does. It can, it can be a little bit grittier if you have a cheap canvas. A lot of times, sometimes the things that will happen is like the, the corners will collapse in. Like they won't be as strong of a fabric, you know, the, the, these canvases that I'm using are like a 12 ounce canvas, which means that, you know, it's just thicker canvas. So it doesn't stretch and move as much when I'm painting on it. And the ones that you're getting are probably closer to like an eight ounce. So they're going to be a lot thinner fabric. And so they're going to move more as you paint and they're going to buckle and bend and, you know, but it doesn't say that they're not perfectly fine to use i just like if i was going to give it as a gift or worried about like longevity i'd probably use a better canvas with the deeper um you know deeper deeper sides um and uh the gallery wrapped you know kind but those cheaper canvases and canvas panels that's why i like to paint on canvas panels a lot too because they're great for practice they're cheap and um they're great easy to store you know so that's why i paint on canvas panels quite a lot um and the thing with canvas with the cheaper canvases you can kind of replicate the better canvases or give them a coat of gesso just to smooth out some of the grittiness um that they can tend to have um because they're probably using cheap gesso or maybe not gessoing as much so anyhow so that kind of goes into this question does it recommend sanding a canvas before painting it i don't because i'm using pretty good decent quality canvases that don't need that carolyn but yeah if you are getting a canvas that's super cheap you're going to notice it just feels like it almost feels like sandpaper you just feel you can run your hand across that that dry canvas and it just feels gritty and that will suck the paint out of your like brush like it will it's like painting on a drywall like a flat 
is like a matte surface um, flat paint. I learned that the hard way, like to charge more if I'm doing a mural on a flat matte surface than on a gloss or not gloss necessarily, but like a semi-gloss or a satin because the flat that flat surface or that flat canvas just sucks the moisture right out of your paint. So if you want to, what you can do is like, like I said, um, wet it down. So spray it really good with water and then use a nice um, coat of gesso, one or two coats, and then sand it a little bit in between. So it's nice and smooth. And then you're going to have uh, basically the same kind of surface as I'm painting on that's a little bit smoother and nicer to paint on. So you can use those cheaper canvases, use a you know, $10 bottle of gesso and make them really, um, really nice surfaces to paint on. You can even use the gesso on wood and things like that too to paint on. So you don't have to paint just on canvas. Like I used to paint on all kinds of stuff. Uh, what is the brand of acrylic pen that I use to mark? It is the PBO um, acrylic markers. I also use Montana, Molotow. There's the Montana, I think. Or is that the Molotow? I'm not sure. Uh, Montana. That's one Montana. I've also got some Posca. And this is the Molotow. So those are the four that I use that are their acrylic paint markers. Um, and they all, they're all pretty equally good. I think I haven't really found any problems with any of them. So I'm happy with all of them. I got a, you know, just a variety to try and I haven't found any, but I do like the, at least the 0.7 nib to sign with. Cause anything's bigger than that. You're going to get a big black, big bold line. It's not, not good. Can you have two styles? Um, yeah, definitely, Karen. I mean, I think that there's a lot of artists. Um, if you look at like Picasso, even Van Gogh, um, uh, different artists that um, change styles, you know, mid-career, they just kind of decided to try new things. Um, you know, for a long time, Picasso did kind of like portraitures and like more representational art, although it was it was in his you know kind of quirky style. But it was much more representational, and then he went into this cubism thing and did, you know, totally off-the-wall stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that that's how you grow as an artist for sure. And I like to do all kinds of stuff. So I am I feel like, I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I have to nail down to one particular style. I do find that I tend to do the same kind of style if I'm left to do it realistic-like. So all my paintings that are kind of realism tend to be in the same style, and that's just kind of naturally how I do them. But then if I'm trying new things like the Impressionist style or different things, and I'm really like pushing on the envelope to try to loosen up and do different things, that I can tend to have you know quite a few different sort of styles that I that they turn out to be, especially like the palette knife paintings are very different from these these kind of paintings that I do. So I I like that. I I feel like I learn a lot doing that and I think I enjoy teaching that and just teaching new things I don't like to kind of just have a narrow definition of what my art should look like so yeah I think I think so I, I don't see why you can't do that so you haven't painted the sides why I usually just save those for the end because I'm lazy <laughs> that's it <laughs> I tend to it's uh, yeah, it's not interesting to paint them on YouTube. Um, so, but what I do is I paint them black, and then that way, when they're hanging up on the wall, they look like they're kind of framed a little bit. I just like to have them black. So that's what I do. Yeah. Have you learned to paint from somewhere, or or you paint? This is amazing just by practicing. Um, and how long have you been practicing? How long have, do I have to practice to be this good? Uh, okay, well, they do say, like, you know, to master someone, what is it, 10,000 hours? Is that right? Um, I think something like that, you know, which would be years of work. But you can definitely get, get good at it if you're practicing. It took me probably, okay, so I say I started... I started doing like drawing and stuff. I always liked to do drawing and coloring and things like that when I was a kid. So I always had some sort of thing that I was doing with art. Um, it, I don't think I was necessarily naturally super talented at it, but I think I did have some innate talent. That does not mean you have to have talent to at, at art to do this. I don't, I don't believe that at all. I feel like it's just like doing music or any other kind of thing, you may have innate talent for it that makes it a little bit easier for you to progress faster. But 
just because you're not naturally talented at it doesn't mean that you can't just work work at it and get better um, and be just as good as somebody that has natural talent that maybe doesn't practice at all, you know, um, or better, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, uh, I, I started out when I was a kid. I, um, I got serious about it in high school. So um, I had a really good art teacher for my last two years of high school. And then I took it in college. I did two years of art in college. And then um, graduated with an associate's degree and didn't. And then we had kids. And so <laughs> I was pretty much on my own and decided to do like toll painting. And so I just got books. There wasn't YouTube around to teach me anything. So I got books and I did patterns on wood, wood paintings and things like that and painted that. And I would say it probably took me... Oh, about four years until I started feeling like I kind of knew what I was doing a little bit. In college, I definitely didn't know what I was doing. And I got really, really frustrated with trying to do this kind of art. Like if I had tried to do this kind of a painting in in college, I would not have been able to do it. And I would have been really frustrated because they didn't really teach us techniques. Um, and so like, I wanted to do this kind of thing, but I didn't know how to get there. The only person I knew that I'd watched was Bob Ross and he was using oil paints and not acrylics, which is what I was using. And so I would try to do the sky like he was doing and my paint would be dry, you know, before I got to blend it, it wouldn't blend at all, you know, and I would just be like super frustrated or I would take like a half an hour to mix just the right color, you know, and then, and then it would be dry, you know, by the time I got back to trying to blend something, you know, so anyhow. I found it very frustrating um, to do it the art school way um, and except you know I wasn't in a great it wasn't a great it was a community college so you know in their defense it was like a pottery teacher trying to teach uh, a, you know painting so um, I don't know how it would have been if I'd gone to a better art school but um, anyhow yeah so I just kind of taught myself I, I got books I taught myself at my kitchen table and I just practiced and practiced and practiced and it like I said it took me a good like three or four years of just practicing to get to where I felt a little bit more competent at it and then you know started selling and and teaching it myself and that kind of thing yeah and then there was a trip to France in 2004. Yeah. And, and yeah. And so I did, you know, I'm not saying like, it's not, it's been smooth sailing since then. And I've I like, I've, you know, been excellent at art ever since then. Like I did wood crafting and things. And so I would like do 12 of the same thing and sell them at craft fairs and things. And it would be a lot of the toll painting stuff. So I did a lot of the one stroke brush work where I was, you know, doing these flowers and things with the, with the brush and, and, um, very very simplified style and um so i don't mean to interrupt but that right there is very interesting because you were painting not mass but large quantities of items right. identically and yes. so you were learning to do it efficiently yes how can i efficiently paint this right flower this whatever yes. with as few strokes and i think that's has had a large impact on it has on your style it did and it and it um it made me fast better faster for sure because having to repeat yourself and do the same thing over and over again um it definitely gets your skills technically right where you want them to be so i did that for about 10 years got really burnt out on it and then like in the early 2000s like just quit completely and didn't do art for two years and then we moved into this house actually 20 something years ago and um, my son was like one and we wanted to paint the nursery. So I did a mural for the nursery and I found that I really um, loved it. It's the first time I'd done a mural and um, I was like, this is great. You know, so I started doing murals, working, doing murals and slowly got back into painting and doing canvases this time and not doing the kind of painting that I was doing before, which was super repetitive and not very inspiring. <laughs> um, and yeah, that was around the same time that we went to a trip to France and I saw the Impressionist paintings in person and like whole rooms of Van Gogh's and whole rooms of Mon Monet and like just seeing those paintings that were like so inspiring in person, like really kind of clicked a switch in my brain and was like, this is something I need to be doing. Like, this is not just something that I like to do as a hobby. Like, this is something I have to do, you know? So I, I and plus I was back, at home we you know i'd been working uh 
and then got pregnant and, and was back at home, you know, with my little one. So um, I decided to start painting again and doing canvases and got into galleries. And it, it was amazing the second time around because I was better at it because I had done all the work learning the techniques. So if nothing else, I would get my, my brush stroke workshop that I have. Like I have a video about brush strokes and just do that. Like <laughs> practice those. It's almost like piano scales, you know? I mean, it may not be like the same as actually doing a painting, but you're kind of building up those, that muscle memory and you will be able to manipulate your brushes however you want to. Um, so yeah, once I started doing canvases, it was like I could do these things that I had been wanting to do since college um, because I had the technical skills then, you know, and I kind of, it took me a while to kind of figure out how to get there, you know, and how to mix colors. Cause I was used to using pre-mixed colors that were like the acrylic paint, um, in the tubes, the craft paint. Um, so I hadn't really color mixed colors a whole lot. So I had to teach myself how to do that. And, you know, it, it, it's just a process of learning and I still learn stuff that I don't know. And I, you know, I, I feel like I never am going to stop learning. I hope, you know, how to do stuff and do things better try new things you know that's the fun about art you, there's no right or wrong way of doing it that's it that's it all right thanks guys so much sorry we got long-winded there at the end but hopefully that inspired you or some people needed to hear that hopefully um so yeah i uh Oh, yeah. Go ahead and check out thankfulart.com if you want to sign up for our newsletter. And also, we're going to be coming out with a new website, hopefully within a few weeks here. Sometime in May. Fingers crossed. I don't know. We'll see. But um, we're getting real, real close to a new website. And what it'll be is kind of a one-stop shop. So if those, those of you who are patrons will be able to go there find the videos, all the videos that we have, you still have the Thankful Art up. Yeah. Um, patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art to do to sign up for Patreon. Um, right now our posts are on Patreon and you kind of have to go there to find and download traceables and things like that. But uh, and watch the extra videos um, on other platforms. But um, once we get the new website done, we'll have everything there. You can watch all the videos straight from our website. So I'm really, really, really excited. Fingers crossed it's going to work. My brother Josh is working really hard on it. He's a great uh, website developer. So um, and, shout out to Josh. For and while well, we appreciate everybody who supports us over on patreon.com, yes. if you're watching this live, do not sign up today. Yes, don't. Yes, thank you. Because it's the last day of the month. They will charge you for April, and then tomorrow they will charge you for May. Yes, it will. Just wait till tomorrow. Yes, wait, wait. Wait till May 1st. Don't ever sign up on the last day of the month. Right. If you're in the future, just go ahead and sign up. (laughs) (laughs) Whenever you want. We may end up having a website sign up um, directly from the website eventually, but right now... Is still in the work, so I don't know if that'll happen, but but yeah, that that's kind of a potential. And also, um, we've thought I've thought about adding some of the um, memberships. Um, I'm just adding a little bit of yellow pops down there in the tree. Um, adding the memberships straight here on YouTube. So if you've done that on any other channels and you think that's something that might be fun for us to do, let me know in the comments if you think. Like having special emojis for chat and things like that. There's yeah. different things that memberships here on YouTube can provide that we couldn't do um, in other other places. So let me know if you've done that. If you think that that might be fun, something fun you'd like a, like to see us do, and I'll look into it. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we will not be doing Saturdays through May. So we're going to be only Tuesdays all the way um, for the next couple of few months. Right. We usually do that in the summer. We're going to we're gonna have to start it a little early this year because we've got family, family coming in, in May. And yeah. we've just got lots of stuff going on. And we were only going to have like one Saturday free. <laughs> so we're like, well, we might as well just <laughs> take it off. Right. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. All yeah, right. Tuesdays. Thanks. Yeah, we'll be here Tuesday night, so check us out. All right, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.